Hello, welcome to another video. Today we have the Belkin Boost Charge GAN Wall Charger 30 watt USB C adapter. They're pretty vague on the box about specs. They have some vague numbers about charging times, which don't mean anything. Uh, it tells you a lot about GAN, which doesn't tell you what it is or what it stands for. Uh, yeah, let's break open the box. Huge box, by the way. Ugreen 30 watt adapter. Belkin 30 watt adapter. Why? Instruction manual. Very large. Wow. That's a lot of instruction manual. Maybe a little too much instruction manual. See if I can find my language here. I give up on that one. I'm not even going to try and find anything in there. That's just too much to look at. You can see it's got a Intertech ETL safety mark. FCC, I've seen that on lots of these. We can see the 30 watt PD and it does tell you what it can do. So we can see it goes up to 20 volts, 1.5 amps, and it's got all the other modes as well. Made in Vietnam, I've seen that on one other adapter before. Got our model number, actual model number, WCH001DQ. This one does have the fold out leads. Plastic PD. The packaging for the Belkin comes in at 43 grams. A 30 watt Belkin power adapter weighs 67 grams. So one of the things off the bat I don't really like is the, I mean, this is a little bit of a bigger adapter, but the weight of the packaging is quite substantial. So we'll see if the, uh, the extra weight in this adapter and their needlessly oversized packaging actually adds up to some real changes in the power quality designed in California. There's the six for the efficiency, hiding. All right. Let's plug it in. Not so bad. So we've seen about 0.03 something watts over here. Not too bad. Power factor pretty typical. See what our THD looks like. And oh yeah, it's just as bad as everything else. 230 something percent. Now we can go through the modes. We have 5 volts, 9 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, and back to 5. So 5, 9, 15 and 20. So this does not have a 12 volt mode. 10 watt load on there. So 10 watts over here. So you're about 11 and a half watts. Power factor about 0.55. It's not surprising me yet. So with our current THD, 146. Not fantastic. Let's see if it can change modes on. So nine, yep, it changed to the nine volt, no problem. 15, did that. Changed up to 20. Let's go for broke. 30 watts. So we're up to 30 watts now. Power factors come up a little bit. No real surprise there, but still kind of on the low side. So we're driving about 33 watts. So this is, yeah, it's not bad. Not bad, but it's definitely using some power. I don't see anything that's too much of a surprise. Really, it seems like a pretty typical power adapter. So it's a larger adapter. So maybe I was expecting to have a slightly better performance. Let's see what overload is. So we got 30 watts. Let's take it to 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. 36, still going, 37, 38, and it's gone. And then it does recover back to the lower voltage mode as is typical for these devices, but it does recover. It will go straight to 37 watts, but its rating is 30 watts, so we'll keep it within that range. 30 watts seems pretty comfortable there. So the overload set maybe a little, a little on the higher side with this one, but then again, it's a higher power, so maybe they push the overload a little higher just to be conserve to make sure they don't trip uh, arbitrarily or, or make sure they don't prematurely trip the overcurrent protection. 37 watts, it's not bad. It's, it's pushing it, but it's it's still within a safe range for USB-C uh, power delivery specification, certainly well within that. All right, so we have this power adapter again. Let's go ahead and go over the overall results. Overall, 90 power quality, so this is tied for the top spot right now. We can see that the efficiency on this one actually goes over 90%, 91% for the upper loads, which is fantastic. So, you know, it's doing a very good job of converting the incoming power to uh, power out a class leader in that field, really. We can see that the idle, again, is a zero because of that very, very high THD. It does have low power consumption, but it's just not very good quality at that low, low load. When we take a look at this compared with the other ones, we can see that it's tied for top dog, basically. So this is a 30 watt adapter and it's right up there with the best. Not a bad purchase. So you are paying a little more for this adapter, you know, so premium price and they are basically giving you a premium product for this class. When we take a look at the graph, 
we can see that the idle power consumption is very, very low, but we can see that the quality is bad, so it's all the way at the bottom of the graph. It's kind of going to be a little cluster down there. It looks like there's quite a few adapters that fall within that same range. When we look at the load graph, we can see that it's on the other side of the things. You know, it's up towards the top. It's one of the higher power devices, so it's towards the right of the graph, but it's also in the top of the class in terms of the overall power quality. So overall, this isn't a bad adapter. You know, if you want to pay a little bit more money and want to get a little bit more for what you're paying for, uh, this adapter does deliver. It's not perfect, but it's really not a bad choice. The, the competition that I'm going to put this adapter up against, and I, I'm hoping it's good competition, is going to be this U-Green, so that's going to be next. This is a 30-watt adapter also. So stay tuned. Check out some of my other videos. There's links somewhere. And thanks for watching. Check out the next one. Bye.